guaranteed. Visit arnoldclark.com. Welcome to Peter and Ruffy's Football Show, sponsored by Arnold Clark. It's Monday, it's the 16th of November. Great to have your company. I'm Peter Martin. Alan Ruff, as ever, is by my side. Tam McManus and Alison McConnell as well. And uh, I don't know why I said you're by my side, Ruffy. You're a long way away from my side, but, you know, it's just, it's a partnership. Uh, we're together, as ever, as we have been for the last nine years. Where am I going with this? Uh, we've got lots to talk about. We'll hear from Steve Clark. We will talk about Scotland. We will talk about a few of the players involved in Scotland as well. Uh, and then we will look to that game against Israel. And let's not forget, also coming up at the weekend, uh, we're back to the Scottish Premiership as well. So lots to look forward to. We'll reflect on the weekend, uh, Slovakia and the small matter of those uh, bet friends. League Cup group stage games. Uh, we'll look at the draw for the League Cup in the last 16 as well. So that's all to look forward to. Thank you very much for joining us. Like, share and follow if you've got a chance. And if you're on our YouTube channel, don't forget to subscribe too. And I can tell you coming up in the next couple of weeks, we've got a bumper competition for you, which you will not want to miss. It's uh, very, very exciting. Even I'm excited, which takes a bit of you know, Ruffy. Um, what about Slovakia? Um, we got the high of that and then Suddenly, Ruffy, you know, uh, Serbia we win, Slovakia we don't. No, it's no good, no good reading. You know, three wins at the last seven games. Uh, we must be on a downer now. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> 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 yeah, I looked at that stat. We've only won three games in 90 minutes in the last seven games. But that it just shows you, you know, you, you suit the stats. And uh, yesterday, uh, I thought that with the changes we had, we keep talking about Rangers and Celtic, guys coming off the bench and influence games. We've not, we've never had that with Scotland. We've never had six or seven guys who could come onto the part and be as good as the guys that are left out. So that would be the positive side to that game. I don't think we should have lost it. You know, I thought maybe we should get a, a, a draw at, it at least. But uh, no, it's, it's still positive. It's still, we're ticking along there. I wouldn't have liked to see as failing to get into this top spot, you know, that would be a wee bit of a downer in the light of everything that we've done. So let's hope we can get a good result of Israel. Yeah, just Israel, if we beat them, then uh, we will, of course, uh, be topping the group. That is, of course, uh, you've got to keep your eye on what's happening with the uh, Czech Republic as well when they take on Slovakia. But nevertheless, we want destiny in our own hands. Um, as to the performance, let's get into the meat and bones of that. I don't have an agenda against the boy, Tam. I just have not really been convinced since day one about Ollie McBurney. I don't think he's the answer. For me, the way ahead is Dykes with either Griffiths, Dykes with either Fraser, or Dykes with Christie. Yeah, if I, I'm listening. Uh, he's, getting, he's getting a lot of stick, the boy, Ollie McBurney. Uh, let's be honest, he's getting his pelters, uh, particularly on social media and, and off commentators and, and media. But listen, I don't think he's a bad player. I think he's really struggling in front of a goal. I think he needs a goal. Um, you know, I was a striker myself. Listen, I know the pressures when you're going through a drought. His droughts lasted a couple of months, mine's lasted about 10 years. Uh, so, listen, I understand the goal shrink. He needs a goal for Scotland. He's desperate. He's trying. He's, I think he's trying his hardest. He's maybe trying too hard to get that goal. He had three decent chances yesterday. Um, you know, I think the one that, he, that was slipped through to him was the best one where he should have hit it first time. I think a confident striker, you know, a few goals under his belt, would have hit that first time. But he's tried to take a touch to tee himself up. And the, and the chance was gone. But uh, listen, I think he's a decent player. I think some of the criticism is over the top. I, I get people entitled to their opinion, but if you're in a Scotland jersey, for me, you've got to get behind people. You've got to support them, um, no matter what club they play for, what club they support. Um, I think there's another thing. It's a wee bit of political. We, we all make Burnley. And for me, he's, he's got to be supported. I don't think he's your number one striker, Peter, but as a backup, then I think he's, he's adequate. Well, I disagree with you 100%, Tam. I mean, uh, yes, we want to be patriotic. Yes, everybody wants Scotland to do well. But, you know, giving an opinion, uh, you know, nobody's doubting the boy's a good player because Sheffield United decided they want to spend £20 million on him. Um, if there are people out there who've been, um, let's say, the, the criticism hasn't been constructive, then that's fine. I don't know who they are. Um, I certainly haven't read it. I think as an observation, Alison, on Ollie McBurney, what I'm saying is at international level, he doesn't look as if he's got that. I've looked at his stats. I mean, he's you know, when he got the move to Sheffield United, it was off the back of scoring something like 24 goals in the lower league. Um, 
And, you know, his record of scoring for Sheffield United is not that great. Um, he works his socks off. He scored one of the penalties. I get where Tam's coming from, from, from the point of view of let's all collectively back people. But our job is to give an opinion on an individual. I think he looks out his depth, if I'm being very honest. I think... Uh... I think he looks bereft of confidence and, and part of me wonders if he did get that first goal and, and he had a wee bit more self-belief, would he look more at home? Uh, I'm not sure, but I, I would tend to agree with Peter. I, I just think uh, I think it looks like a level too much just now. I understand why he's in the squad. Uh, I don't think Scotland have a, a huge amount of options, but for me, Dykes has been the, the absolute find of, of the last few months. When, when he committed himself to Scotland over Australia, I think it was a, a huge boost. And the question now going forward is, is really who partners him. I think once Fraser's fit again and back in the squad, I think that's what you'll see is, is uh, the first choice pairing. And I think... McBurney might just gradually drift out of the squad. I might be wrong, uh, but I would be interested to see what a goal would do for him if we would see. Allison needs player. a goal. I think he's <laughs> a totally different player if he gets a goal. Honestly, I, I think he's it'll be the monkey off his back. Yeah, but but, but to get a goal, Tam, you get one goal. I know where you're coming from. I, I understand strikers and your mentality. You get a goal, the confidence is rip, rippling through you. But this is. This is a guy whose stats don't suggest that if he gets one goal, he's going to go on a run and regularly score Tam. You know, at, at this level. Peter, I don't think he's. A, I don't think. I don't think he's a prolific goal scorer. I don't think he is. I agree with you. But you know, I think he, if he gets a goal, you'll see a far better player, more confident player. It looks as if he's a, He's getting zero confidence whatsoever. You no, know, I, I, I wouldn't have fancied him to score an open goal yesterday. He's just. He's one of the, in one of those runs where. People are on his back, you know, I've been there myself and you need a goal and he's not got one and he's got to get more criticism, I, I, I get that. But I don't think he's, I think some of the criticism I've read on social media has been miles over the top. You know, if you're entitled oh, no. to say you don't think he's good enough, but <laughs> no, Tam, some of the stuff Tam. has been yeah. outrageous. But Tam, with all due respect, some of the people on social media who post things, no, I, wouldn't I, know I, get them, that. I, I wouldn't give them the light of day. If you're a pundit, if you're an ex-footballer, if you're a, if you're a journalist, if you're a if you're a football fan observing it, Robbie, I, I I don't think there's any healthy situation of even giving any credence to some people talking about. Okay, he got himself in a, a silly situation in the tunnel one day, but at the end of the day, the boy turns up and gives his all for Scotland. But I'm just talking about levels on him. I'm just looking at him as a footballer and I'm thinking it, it, it's not quite for me clicking at the moment. And I don't think a goal will do it, Ruffy. Mm-hmm. No, and the evidence of what we saw, you know, you can't, for Scotland, I mean, you, you can't really defend him. You know, yeah, he'll put in, you know, 100%. You would expect that as soon as you pull on that jersey. But uh, if we're looking for somebody to score goals and score a, a few goals, you know, it, it doesn't look as if he's there just now. I would say... I would say he's fourth choice just now. I, I would say if Griffiths was fit and Fraser was there and Dykes is there, I, I think the manager would see him as fourth choice, uh, which means he'd be on the bench coming off. I don't think he's a... At this moment, he's not proved that he's a given to start the games. So I, I, I can see where Tam's coming for you. know, If you're a striker, you do. There's tons of strikers have had barden spells, you know, and then all of a sudden they score a lot of goals. But we, ha- we haven't seen that. I mean, even at club level, you know, he's no prolific. You know, he'll score the odd goal here and there. Maybe that's yeah. what kind of player he is. Yeah. To be fair, I thought, it showed, um, I thought it showed a, a lot of confidence and a lot of bottle for him on Thursday night to take one of the penalties because he, he's not deaf to the criticism. I think he, he's well aware uh, of what's going on round about him and, and the conversation that's going on round about him about whether or not he, he belongs in that company, I think. Had he missed that penalty on Thursday night, I think uh, there would have been a tsunami of criticism coming his way, more so than for anyone else. So I, I do admire the fact that he had a bit of belief to, st- to step up and take it in, in a hugely pressurised situation. I'm glad you said that, Ali, because believe me, yep. when he was walking up, I was actually wa- I was looking at the boy and I said, please, please let this boy score because I wish him no ill. I'm just giving you an observation, my opinion on what I think at this level you know, whether he's got it or not, but I just, I genuinely. Peter's disappeared. I think, I think it did show a lot of confidence from him to go up and, and take it because you do, you do know that he would have invited so much criticism, just the fact that he is a, a favoured whipping boy. 
at times. I think it, it showed tremendous self belief, and maybe, maybe that augurs well for him going forward. That he has a thicker skin than maybe we think he has, or maybe the, a thicker skin than, than we've given him credit for, which which would suggest he would be capable then, and uh, maybe finding something in him to come back and prove that he's, he's worthy of uh, of staying in the squad. Yeah, listen, here's what the Scotland manager, um, Steve Clark, had to say about him. He said, you know, first and foremost, um, I think Steve Clark's well aware that McBurney has a problem with not only his confidence, the weight of expectation, but also the criticism. He did what, what he was in the team to do, which was allow Ryan Christie and Stuart Armstrong to get up and support him well. He had one very good chance in the first half that he couldn't quite get his shot away. It was excellent defending. But he just has to keep doing what he's doing. You, he's, he's what right? His, his effort for the team was was first class today, and the goal, the goal, if it comes, will be very big for him. But he shouldn't let it weigh too heavy on his shoulders. Yeah, I'm almost certain, uh, Ruffy, that Steve Clark will him and maybe take him to the side, as probably many a manager has done with Tam, and just said, "Look, stick at it. You're doing the job that I got you in for." Yeah, you've got to defend your players. You you, you see players who are going through a bad spell, uh, or a barren spell rather, and you've got to put the, the arm around them uh, and, and, and try and get them to believe that uh, a, a goal will come. Uh, it'll be interesting to see whether he keeps them in the side for the Israel game with that belief that he has got a goal in him. But as Tam says, the longer it goes, the more doubters there'll be. So the boy's the only one that can sort it out. He, if he scores a goal, then everybody gets off his back. Peter, yeah, of course. Yeah, I think you know. Ruffy said that he's fourth choice at the minute. I think he's second choice at the at, in that lone striker role. I don't think there's going. No, we're not going to play two up front in many games in, in international level. So I think if you're playing the way we play, you know, with, with one off, one up, one off. If anything happens to Dykes, McBurnley's the next guy in, and because McGriffiths can't play the lone striker role, the Fraser can't play the lone striker role. Maybe but Kevin what, is, but but what about well, what about Tom if Dykes is there? No, if Dykes says he's not going to play, he's going to be he's going to be back up to Dykes. That's what I mean. And you've got you've got the two big men up there, and you've got the two two off. You know, would be Fraser and Griffiths to go and play alongside them. Um, but, but I don't but think at, I think he's still a major part time, as as a target. But at man. this moment, at this moment in time, if Dykes is playing, I'd more confidence in Griffiths and Fraser scoring before him. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I don't think he's going to play up front ever with Dykes. But I'm just saying, if he's if anything happens to Dykes, God forbid. Then he's your next man, and he plays that as that target man. There's no, there's nobody else. Funny you should say that, by the way. I mean, I, I, I don't know. I, I actually uh, taking on what Ali said. I think he'll eventually drop down to third and fourth choice. Um, and when you mentioned there, uh, Tam, that we might not play two strikers regularly at international level. Certainly not against the bigger sides, but uh, you know we've got Israel coming up, um, so it's Dykes and En other. Um, and then the two Hamden games, I think you'd be looking. I think you'd be looking at the European Championships, Tam, and saying to yourself, "Definitely going to play two at home um, when you come up against Croatia and the Czech Republic, surely at Hamden." Mm, it's up to Stevie Clark. I don't think he'll, he'll move from what he's doing there now. I think he'll play either Dykes is obviously he's, he's he's number one striker. He's going to play as the number one up there, and he'll play either Fraser off him or, or Christie off him. But I think, as I said to you, I think if anything happens to Dykes. I think I'm looking at it as a lone striker, as playing as that target man. I don't think you've anybody else in that kind of stature, apart from Ollie McBurney, who can hold the ball up and be that target. I, I, I just wonder about Griffiths in that role too, whether or not he would be fit enough to come back and and, and be trusted enough to, to play a 90 minutes just now. I think uh, for the light, fitness will be a big, a big issue too. If uh, if Dykes was to go out, could could you trust Griffiths to come in and play a, a full ninety minutes? Fraser's also out just now too. Is there anyone else that you could trust to come in and, and get through a full game? I'll tell you one thing, Ruffy. Uh, Wednesday, uh, we like to keep that momentum going. Here's what Steve Clark had to say about you know potentially starting another run of good results, starting with Israel. An unbeaten run's going to end sometime. Uh, there's a way to lose the game. I thought we, no, I'm going to say we lost well, but we played well. We deserve more out of the game. But everything we want to do in this section is, is still in front of us. We, we have to start the next 
unbeaten run, hopefully winning run on Wednesday night in Israel. So it's still in front of us. If we want to win this section, we have to get three points in the last game and that's what we're going to try and do. Tom, apart from the obvious disappointment of actually uh, losing the game uh, against Slovakia, I wasn't that disappointed because I thought we played some really good football. You know, had we been more clinical, we might have got a draw out of it, possibly more. But I, but I think the way he's got them organised now, whether it's nine changes or not, you know, everybody's eager to play. And I like sometimes the way that they, they are actually playing and building now. Yeah, listen, I, I thought Scotland played really well yesterday at times. Um, I think we're very unfortunate to lose the game. Um, we never had the wee rub of the green which maybe we got against Serbia, but you'd rather obviously get the rub of the green the other night than, than yesterday, so I think it evens itself up a wee bit. We've still got a great opportunity to go to Israel, who are bottom of the group, not got much to play for, win the game and, uh, and top the group and get promotion. So I think that there was some great performances individually yesterday. I thought Kieran Tierney down that left side was outstanding. Um, I thought Ryan Christie, I think that goal against Serbia has gave him such a lift. He was he was superb yesterday. And uh, there was... There was Terrific performances all over the pitch. Unfortunately, we never got the result. And a great save in the last minute from the goalkeeper from Lee Griffiths, who done everything right. You know, he'd fancy Lee Griffiths in that situation. That's why he's in the squad, coming on late, getting in behind. And he, and he, and he, he bullets it in the bottom corner, and it's a tremendous save for the goalkeeper. So I just think we're a wee bit unlucky on, on the day not to get anything. But that same level of performance should be good enough to get the three points against Israel. Yeah, absolutely. And we're, get, we're, we're getting options in different areas now, Ruffy. I mean, I think Scott McKenna commented on that, the fact that you know you can make as many changes like that and it still seems to be playing the same way now. I don't want to get too more optimistic uh, as a Scott, uh, Ruffy, because you know what happens, we usually get a custom pie in our face. Yeah, but I, I'm pleased with the, the reserve we've got in midfield. You know, if Armstrong's a reserve, if McLean's a reserve... You know, they, they've come on and they've shown that they have the quality to start the game. So, as I said at the beginning of the show, magnificent when you've got that uh, many people on the bench. And I know there's quite a lot of people on the bench nowadays, so you've got a big pick uh, to choose from. But, no, I, I don't think anybody's let the, the team down at all in the Serbia game or the game there uh, the other day there. You know, I'd like to see us going out and beating Israel. And let's not forget, we haven't beaten them. You know, we've had two draws, nothing each and one each. You know, so let's go out and beat a team, you know, and, and then get us back on the rails. Yeah, absolutely. I don't know if you're aware of this, Ali, but now, on a regular basis, Tam just continually throws in Kevin Nisbet. Um, I, I, I'm i loath to suggest an affair, but uh, nevertheless, <laughs> he's, he's, cert he's certainly up there as his age. Hey, I showed Charlie Adam last night. Hey. I just wonder he's if Tam's on a... He's not, he's not for budging. I just wonder if Tam's on a commission, if there's some kind of percentage going on there, that if he makes it into the international squad, that he, he's getting some <laughs> kind of... Uh, he's getting some kind of cut here of, of a fee. You, you would have to, say if, uh, you'd have to say if Lord and Shanklin's in the Scotland squad because of the goals he scored for Dundee United, then you've got to have the same food of thought, you know, with Nisbet. You know, if he continues to score uh, maybe a friendly game or something, you, you bring him in because the two of them are different players, right enough. You know, one's more of a target man. But uh, Lord and Shanklin hasn't been scoring goals for a wee while. So, you know, maybe, maybe it is time to give somebody else a chance. I think Nisbet's yeah, barely in Shankland, uh, Peter. You do? Yes. And Charlie Adam last night, you know, you've seen the text last night, Charlie Adam was raving about Kevin Nisbet. And sometimes, you know, I can see it from the stand. You know, Charlie Adam's on the pitch last night alongside Kevin Nisbet. And he texted me last night and said he was outstanding. Yeah, I mean, that's the good thing about it. You know, we want many options. We want uh, more than a few options to come through. I mean, I mean, listening to a lot of people on the feed suggesting maybe even uh, Tony Watt um, would love people to just make a run now and and as we're well aware Ali listen the incentive is for players now week in week out I mean for us as journalists to go to games now and know that there's there's meaningful football there and an incentive for the players is go out there play good football regularly and you never know you might force your way into the manager's plans 
for us as an industry, I don't think you can underestimate what getting to the next summer's European Championships does. It gives, if it gives us a lift, then what does it do for the players? If we can feel the positive benefits of it, then you can only imagine what that does in our dressing room. And I think there's a number of players who who very quietly be saying to themselves, right. Over the next six, seven, eight months, I'm going to get myself in that squad. Lewis Ferguson, I think, must be be chapping at the door. I think you, you look at the way he's performed for Aberdeen over the last 14 or 15 months, you think he, he must fancy that if he sustains that form, he might find himself in the squad. Tony Watts, another one. I think Nesbitt, if he continues to score goals, you make yourself impossible to overlook. But I, I just think that's the glory of being in a competition like this, is that it just gives everything an added incentive, that there's a drive and a push towards a squad. And, and, and there'll be a number of players thinking, I can make that, I can get myself in there, or I can make myself so difficult to ignore that I've got to get a chance in the build-up somewhere. Yeah, absolutely. Here's how the uh, results looked uh, for all the home nations over the weekend, um, as well as uh, Slovakia, Scotland, that 1-0 defeat. Uh, there was, of course, uh, a game between Wales and the Republic of Ireland. Wales just edging it by a goal to nil. Uh, Belgium 2, England 0, and then uh, Austria 2, Northern Ireland 1. Um, and of the other games, I'll tell you, you know, I don't know what it is, um, but... We, we always seem to get, Ruffy, a special player that you look at for another nation that you wish was Scottish. And one, one of them I watched at the weekend, I thought, oh, I'd love, I'd love for him to have been Scottish. And I'm talking about Jack Grealish. Boy, he, he just looks every inch the top draw, Ruffy. Yeah, and he's just been unleashed. Uh, he's had to wait his time to get in that team. Uh, and we've all seen what he's done at club level and, and, and he did look absolutely superb. I was listening to Harry Kane talking about him. Uh, again, he's playing off a Harry Kane, but you can see the worth that he's got and he's got fantastic ability. And you're right, you know, that, that's what we've got to look, or well, maybe not got to look forward to next June because he's going to establish himself in that team as as, as another, you know, a few other younger player England. England players, although they get beat last night, I don't think the, the scoreline flattered Belgium a wee bit, but uh, I, I think we're, we've got a game of our hands, particularly down in Wembley. Absolutely, and I'll tell you right now, if anybody's thinking of going down south, uh, if anybody's going down south, um, they better start saving their money, because I think the hotels <laughs> are start, they're starting to <laughs> hike them up, and I can tell you that from a personal point of view, as I was looking at the team list, and I'm thinking... It's expensive for rooms, isn't it? <laughs> is that you cutting the numbers already? Is that you jumping <laughs> down? No, I, no, I'm not, I'm not. I'm not suggesting that for a minute. I'll sleep in the flare. I don't even need a room. Don't, don't worry. <laughs> Listen, you're at the bottom of Ruffy's bed. I'm just telling you that's what's <laughs> happening. I'm going round the hotels alley, and I'll tell you. You know what it's like with the jumbos. They'll be looking and thinking, "How the heck?" And we're going to get further and further out. We'll need two trains to get to Wembley at this rate because they are expensive. Well, I think we can all anticipate that as soon as as soon as you knew that qualification was secured, you just know that that prices are going through the roof. Also, the fact that given what we're coming out of it and the fact of how difficult it's been for the hospitality industry, I think there'll be people looking to uh, recoup some of their losses somewhere along the line. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, you know what it's like. I love Tam's attitude to it, Ruffy, um, because uh, if the East Coast Bride troop are having, uh, you know. A, a journey down to Wembley and they're on that bus it'll be it'll be one single room with 32 people in the bed <laughs> it's, it's yeah. like going to Blackpool on holiday Ruffy yeah I think that's what happened uh, in Seville I know for a fact that's what happened in Seville I thought most of the hotels didn't understand why they were three deep uh, uh, at a particular night on the game you know, I think people were just crashing out and it was the same in Manchester as well you know, there was uh, all the hotels that were over full, and uh, but it's great. I mean, Scottish supporters will find a way. You know, they'll be they'll be saving as we speak. You know, to get down there, and they'll probably be down there three or four days before before the game. Yeah, John Barr. You just, just really said... hope that uh, there's a there's a vaccine that, that that things are different and that you can facilitate fans going into to stadiums because it would be the most Scottish thing ever if you had a. Uh, qualification for the first major tournament in 22 years and you had nobody there to see it. 
Yeah, John Barr has just said £423 for two nights is the cheapest that he's found in London at the moment for um, for two nights, um, which is incredible. So uh, basically, uh, John, uh, if you could get Tam, Ruffy and Charlie Adam in there, um, Ali, you'll have your own room uh, and then the rest of us are all just, we're all, <laughs> we're all in another room. We're all in another room. I'm not rooming with Ruffy. Well, you just, listen, John, John, no John, Barr's, John Barr's got it at four hundred twenty-three pounds. I mean, let's 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 cut to the chase here. We need to find as many people in a room as possible. Although I have to tell you, um, when you think when you think of some of the big journeys, the worst place I've ever been to, as far as a hotel uh, and the access to the ground, Ruffy, has to be. And you'll remember this, Seville. I, I mean, the stadium was it was just a nightmare to try and get to it. But at least Wembley, the last time we were there, Ruffy, we were literally 35 sec 35, 40 seconds away. Yeah. We just we just walked round the corner. Yeah, it was wonderful. You know, I think it was a travel led lodge or something like that, a Premier Inn. You know, it was uh, right on the stadium, right where all the bars, the restaurants and everything were it was so approachable. I thought you were going to say Georgia there. Because certainly no. the, the hotel I stayed in Georgia when I got up we got in there late at night and I got up in the morning about nine o'clock and I opened the curtains and there was a tank coming up the road. Yeah. <laughs> I went, yeah. oh my God. To, to, be, to, to be fair, Ruffy, you made me all emotional there when you mentioned Georgia because I, I still write uh, to the cockroach that was sleeping in the room that I had in that hotel. I'll never forget it. Um, and of course, uh, I love the way Ruffy remembers. He says it was a travel lodge at Wembley. Um, the girl Elsie's house, it looked like a cottage to me, but nevertheless, if you want to call it a travel lodge, that's fine, Ruffy. Um, ru hey, talking of um, Charlie Adam, how did he play yesterday? Um, you were there. Um, the Betfred Cup, the group stages, yeah, it wasn't great to be honest. I was expecting better. I had a wee flutter on him as well, first goal. And uh, I don't think he had a shot on night. He had a shot last minute of the game, free kick over the bar, but wasn't he one of his his, his better uh, displays? Um, Dundee, I thought, played okay. I thought 4 1 flattered Hibs. Um, you know, I think Dundee's legs went a little bit last 15, 20 minutes. You know, Hibs got two goals quick fire to, to put the game to bed, but. I think obviously looking forward to the game on Saturday. Hibs against Celtic. Hibs will need to play a lot better. They'll have the spine of their team back. They'll have Marciano back, Porteous, Gogic and Doidge. I think that was four big players missing last night. So I think you'll have the, hopefully, fingers crossed, they'll have the four four players back for the, the big game against Celtic on Saturday. But they'll need to play a lot better. I, I thought they were I thought they were pretty average last night, to be honest. Yeah, the other aspect of this, Ali, uh, I'm just looking at the Betfred Cup. Uh, I wonder if it has implications further down the line. I mean, Hamilton Ackies were awarded a 3-0 victory over Albion Rovers because obviously um, they had to forfeit the tie. I think this is a problem. This is what we, we all anticipated with, with the League Cup, that when you're playing against teams that, that don't have the the same bubble and can't afford the, the, the same kind of protection that the, the top flight teams are affording to their squad, then, then there was a fear that not only would they, would we see a situation that we did at the weekend with Hamilton, but also that there might have been a rise in cases in teams that they were, they were playing against. That's not transpired quite the same way, but but yeah, I think um, in some ways, I think it would have taken a fair bit of pressure off of Hamilton at the weekend, just given the results for, for Brian Rice's side of late. But I don't think it's been a, a huge surprise. And I think you can anticipate there'll be a few more games like that between now and, and the end of the season. Yeah, here are the results from the final games in the Betfred Cup group stages. Um, obviously, you'll be well aware when I read these out that uh, uh, Party Thistle absolutely battered Morton. They were playing like Brazil. It was unbelievable how they could. I heard that as well. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it was incredible. It's going to come for them. They're going to, they're going to batter uh, someone soon, Thistle. Oh, there's going to be a 36 <laughs> nothing against Shots Bonacord. Um, but nevertheless, um, Partick nil, Greenock nil. What happened, Ruffy? What happened? Did you deserve to win? Well, basically. Basically, basically, we had two uh, suspensions. Unfortunately, we were two strikers uh, and a, a wee injuries. But uh, no, I, I don't think there was a big, big gap between Morton and ourselves. I think both of them were pretty equal. But uh, you know, we were just uh, our, our main striker was five foot four, so there was nothing going to happen in the box at all. But we did play some good football. There's no doubt about that. 
But I think a draw was the right result. Yeah, and okay. so was the penalties. Yeah, absolutely, since you won, of course. And of course, uh, Ruffy, there, Ruffy there going down the genetically challenged route of saying, oh, we're never going to score from a yeah. cross ball with a, with a five foot four striker. But if you'd miss, um, five foot four. Yeah, absolutely. And I saw him score in a Champions League final. Um, but that's neither here nor there. Um, and that's for the head. Here's the draw for the 16. Um, I just wonder, Ali, um, Hibs again, face Dundee. Um, I can't Celtic believe against, that, I know, I know, I couldn't believe it myself. <laughs> Celtic against Ross oh. County, Falkirk Rangers, um, Livingston Air United, St Mirren Aberdeen, Hibs against Dundee, our Broughton Fairman, Motherwell St Johnston, and Alloa against Hearts. Um, so, um, there's a few tasty ones in there, but... I'm not going to say Hibs against Dundee. Um, Motherwell St Johnston uh, looks like a tasty one. Celtic will be more than happy, Ali. They've got a home game. I just feel for uh, for some of the smaller clubs, like you, you look at Falkirk drawing Rangers and you think in normal circumstances you're, they, they would be rubbing their hands and thinking this is huge for us going into the, the winter months in, in between now and the end of the season for the financial boost it would, it would have given them. And I think it's difficult to overlook that at, at, at this point in time. But but yeah, to go back to your point, I'm sure Celtic will be relieved with a home tie, least of all just because you're not making that journey up to Dingwall, uh, which can be fairly arduous, particularly when the games come and you're in, in the midst of a fairly hectic domestic and European campaign. Uh, Ali's just mentioned it there, Ruffy, you know only too well at Partick Thistle, Falkirk would have had the hospitality sold out, they would have had the gate receipts, yeah. um, it would have just have been a massive game, it might, you know, it, might, it might still be on telly, but nevertheless, with a, yeah. with a packed yeah. stadium, it would have been brilliant. Yeah, I remember it clearly, uh, last year, uh, we got through to this round because of a goal difference, I think Hearts beat Sunday 6 nothing. so we went through. Uh, we didn't look as if we were going to get through, and then lo and behold, we we got Celtic. Uh, and you're right, you know, with the TV money, the crowd in the stadium, the hospitality, I think you're talking about 100,000. And 100,000 pounds is a lot of money in this day and age, particularly, obviously, for Falkirk and the rest of the team. So Ali's bang on, you know, it's uh, it's a huge, huge loss, and I can see where Falkirk's coming from. Yeah, um, Tam alluded to it earlier, it's going to be great. Uh, to watch this game at the weekend, Tam, to see if Hibs can play um, poorly and win against the Celtic. I know you'll be looking forward to it. Celtic were a wee bit worried, Tam, that they might lose Chris Ayer and Mo El because obviously one of the Norway uh, players had um, returned a positive COVID test. But I think the general feeling from them is both will be allowed to play. They've had three negative tests already. Yeah, that would have been a huge blow for Celtic, no doubt about it. Particularly Elanusi, who's in great form at the minute. Um, scored a couple against Celtic last season in the, in, in the Cup as well. So he's in great form. I think that would be a, a huge blow. But I think if, obviously, I, I've always said this, if, if players are producing negative you know, results day after day after day, you know they should be allowed to play the game. Um, so hopefully you know, Celtic get those two players available and, uh, and both sides are at full strength because I think it'll be a great game. Um, I think Cel uh, Hibs showed against Rangers, particularly that's the best they played all season in a two-each draw You know, against a really good Rangers team. They went 4-4-2 and had the right go uh, at Rangers and I think, they'll, I think they'll do the same again on Saturday. I think they'll have a go at Celtic. You know, I think Celtic's weakness is at the back. So if I was the Hibs manager, I'd be playing two up front and I'd be trying to exploit that soft centre defensively and then just try and defend and tuck in and, 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 you know, and try and uh, limit Celtic's chances at the other end. But I think it'll be a great game. Yeah, people will be looking at that game, certainly. Potentially, it could have been game of the, the weekend, but Rangers against Aberdeen, for me, Ruffy, is game of the weekend. Certainly on the Sunday, um, that one is one you just sit down and, and revel in it because Rangers are absolutely flying at the moment and Aberdeen will be boosted. There's a few players in there who've been playing well for under-21s and the main side. Yeah, and we we'll spoke about it all season. You know, that, that I don't think Rangers and Celtic are going to be tested that much throughout the season, but this weekend is one of the seasons that they are going to be tested. This is one of the, the, the fixture lists that uh, both sets of teams are going to look at them and say, look, hey, one of these two could drop points here. And I'm sure the Rangers supporters will be thinking, if Celtic lose three points at the weekend, then, well, they're going to be overjoyed if they can beat Aberdeen. So it's a massive two games for both clubs, and both of them have got a statement to put out there. Uh, and we'll have to wait and see how that goes. 
Yeah, um, other news that I want to get your thoughts on. Um, Alison, uh, Claire White, the compliance officer, she's going to step down at the end of 2021. Um, it's a fairly controversial figure in her time, um, but nevertheless, she's going to oversee uh, the new person who will take over the job. What do you make of her tenure? I think it's been mixed. I think there's been a, a, a few decisions that you would raise your eyebrows at. I think uh, it's the kind of role where you're always going to be the, the subject of, of fairly intense criticism, I think, at times. And, and I also think it's the kind of role that, that no one's going to be in for any substantial length of time. I think it has a, a particular shelf life just because of the scrutiny that you're always going to come under when, when you're in it. Yeah, I mean, Tam, there's no getting away from it. I don't think she'll be top of the Christmas card list for some Rangers fans. They were calling for her uh, to to be sacked, um, obviously, with uh, the Alan McGregor incident where he was hit with a, a two-match ban. And and let's not forget, you know, Kilmarnock, Gary Dicker, that was another one that caught, uh, you know, quite a few people's anger. Um, I certainly, I don't think personal attacks on her um, have been helpful. That certainly will have been an eye opener to her. She, you know, she might have had jobs elsewhere, but football is just a, a completely different animal. You know, especially when it comes to the passion of, of players maybe getting hit with bans and they're missing out in crucial games. Yeah, listen, it's a very tough job. Um, I don't think she's helped herself on some of the occasions where she's definitely got it wrong. You mentioned a couple of the incidents there, um, and you're never going to be you're never going to be popular. You know, because if you give one decision, you're going to have, particularly in Celtic Rangers, if you give one against one, uh, you're going to hear the wrath of the their other support and vice versa. So, as you say, as Ali said, there, it's a it's a job where you can't stay in too long. Um, I think you never do a year or, year or two, and then you get out and give someone else a chance. And uh, because it's a very high profile job, and it's a lot of it's a lot of scrutiny comes with it. And uh, you know, for personal attacks and different things, emails and stuff going to going to our, our house and going to our emails and. I think it's uh, it's time to pass it on to someone else. Yeah, that's one of three jobs, Ruffy, that I've earmarked in my mind that I would certainly not want to take uh, for all the tea in China. One <laughs> a of them, referee, one of surely them, another one. one of, well, the referee, yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be a referee. Uh, one of them is the compliance officer, um, which I think is, you know, as Tam says there, it's a, it's a no-brainer. You're going to get a, a abuse wrongly, in my view, um, abusing someone if they get it wrong then criticism is part and parcel of the game um and then the other one i wouldn't take i wouldn't take the spfl job that ian blair had which is the fixtures because he gets it in the neck and i certainly wouldn't take the chief executive's job of the sfa because because it's just i think i think in the end everybody actually at some point or another just joins in with you know this person whoever it is is getting it wrong yeah, you're yeah, bang on, but I, I wouldn't be too hard on uh, Ian Maxwell at the SFA because sometimes we might have to turn to somebody for tickets for Scotland games. <laughs> yeah, I, knew, I think he's, he's doing a great job. Oh, I, knew, I, knew, I knew there was an I knew there was an angle there from the big man. I knew that. There had to be an angle on it. Yeah, but listen, uh, when you actually, and this is the great thing about it, and hopefully we can get fans back to the games and, and get to London regardless of the prices, but when you get to a situation, Tam, where your country qualifies for a major tournament, that's when the job becomes that little bit easier and, and people down the ladder uh, start mm. to you know feel as if they can concentrate on their job without you know fear of you know somebody coming and saying well how many how many players have come from grassroots how many players are being developed yeah. you know had had we lost at the weekend there would we have been on to you know had we lost on Thursday would we be on to think tank three and analysing yeah. where our games what going? are Serbia doing <laughs> what are Serbia yeah. doing we need to copy them well, ex- no you're exactly. right you're, you're right you're bang on Peter I think it, it takes the pressure off everyone. You know, in terms of, you look at people in the SFA and working in there, you know, hospitality, selling tickets, selling tables, you know, it gets through the roof. Can you imagine trying to sell tickets when you hadn't qualified? Try to sell hospitality. So it makes all the business development, it makes all their jobs easier. You know, and selling tickets, not a problem. They can, listen, they can sell Hamden three or four times over now. You know, so yeah. it's, it's a huge result going down the whole scale of the SFA from top to bottom. It helps everyone out, particularly coaches as well. You know, my coach at the performance school and no doubt if we didn't qualify there have been questions asked of that how many players have produced and blah 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 so um i think we're, we're all delighted when that uh, we won that penalty shootout 
Yeah, well, Ali and Ruffy and myself had a private WhatsApp group just to determine had it gone pear shaped on Thursday. We were we were basically calling for your head. It's as simple as that. <laughs> <laughs> on, you wouldn't have been the only get, one. <laughs> get, get rid of the grassroots boys. I've got a clue. Uh, although I have to say, and and I'll get your thoughts on this, Ali, um, because I can remember this song when it came out first time around. But I, I've heard that Baccarat. Uh, the two girls are actually going to re-record the song with the Scotland oh, hey. national team. With the oh, Scotland, I can see it my coming. Gosh, oh, I like back in it, they? Oh. They, they, they are more than willing to re-record the song with the Scotland squad if they want Funny to. Funny that. I, oh, I, I don't know about you, Ali, but I, <laughs> hey, I, would definitely, I would definitely do it. I mean, that would be fantastic, wouldn't it? I think it's there for you, isn't it? I think it, it's going to be the, the theme tune now all the way to, to you get there, to, to the Euros. I think it might re- replace the, the national anthem if they could get away with it. Uh, but I just think it will be a, the adopted song of this summer. I think you, even at the weekend, I was at, at Livingston when they played their their um, League Cup tie against Airdrie and every time they scored a goal, that, that's a song that came over the tannoy now. It's, it's all you'll hear for the next nine or ten months. Yeah, the royalties uh, are rolling I mean, in for the oh, girls. Well, oh. well uh, and quite right too. And quite right too. The one thing Tasty. about it, Rocky, if they do record it, I don't know about you, but I think you know the two girls should be there. The Scotland squad should be around them, much the same as you were, Rocky, in the top of the pop studio um, for um, "We Have a Dream" um, and and various other songs that you've been involved in. But if they have the Scotland squad, and then the two girls, and then right front and centre. In front of the microphone should be Andrew Considine in a dress <laughs> with the makeup, and he starts the song. Wouldn't that be magnificent? <laughs> yeah, that'd be fantastic. And obviously there'll be a players' pool, so you'll be you'll be doing anything you want, you know, to get some money onto that pool. But no, it'd be great. I think we all, I think we all know. I mean, my last memory of getting the whole place bouncing at Scotland games at Hamden was that song for the was it Fratelli's. Uh, yes, and, and that, yeah. that's like the place is absolutely Chelsea Dagger. tremendous. You know, and this yeah. song could be the exact same, handled the right way. You know, it could have the whole support when the support gets in. Obviously, the whole place would be absolutely bouncing if uh, that was the tune that was going to get played. I don't know if you remember, Tom, but at half time in the Scotland England game in Euro '96, the Tartan Army just burst into uh, rocking all over the world. I mean, their halftime performance against England in Euro 96 was it was absolutely unbelievable. One of the best I've ever heard. They were singing everything. Yeah, but I, I was only 15 at that point. I was probably out playing football. Uh, so I, I didn't watch the game. But no, listen, Euro 96, you know, it's one of the first tournaments I really remember. It was a fantastic tournament atmosphere-wise. More glorious failure, unfortunately, for us. <laughs> Holland scored that late goal, but... Um, listen, I think if we can get, you know, I think that England have got a great chance. You know, Charlie spoke about it the other day. They got a lot of their games at, at Wembley. So if they can get a wee run together, they've got a great cha- chance uh, of obviously finishing second in the group behind us. Yeah, and, and I'll tell you, Stephen Smith, uh, that'll be right. Um, Steve, Stephen, Stephen Smith has just said the song's a bit of fun. It would be great if we did it for charity. Uh, Stephen, I think you're absolutely right. But the one thing I know, Ruffy, is the two girls, as Tam mentioned from Baccarat, will be sitting there right now and going, <laughs> oh, yeah, dancer, here come the royalties. This is magnificent. Um, uh, listen, uh, lots of uh, nice messages um, uh, with... Uh, songs that every other club adopts over the course of it. You know, you anything from Twist and Shout, you've got Roy Orbison, you've got Depeche Mode, anything that brings a bit of fun and every, all the fans can get involved. Although, wouldn't it just be our luck as Scotland fans and people working in the game that if this pandemic continues and there's no fans at Wembley, I will be absolutely gutted. Uh, I just hope we can get ourselves a, a little shaft of optimism of uh, getting out of this and getting back to football where fans are in the grounds. Um, Ruffy, um, a wee sad note, and I'm going to get your thoughts <coughs> on it. Um, for me, um, you know that I, I loved watching Liverpool, going to see them on many occasions when I was younger. Um, Ray Clemens passed away at 72 years of age. For me, he was absolutely top drawer. He was a brilliant goalkeeper. The record that he has of medals uh, along the way with his three European Cups and two UEFA Cups as well, I I just thought he was a fantastic goalkeeper at a time when England had two great goalkeepers. 
Yeah, that was his problem, you know, that Peter Shelton was there. You know, that uh, we all talk about goalkeepers would get 100 caps. He would have got 100 caps quite easily if it hadn't been Peter Shelton. And I, I read a few quotes for Kenny Dalglish, who was obviously his teammate. And uh, you're right, you know, what I can remember uh, way back then is a fantastic uh, ability that he had. Let's not forget, he didn't wear gloves either, you know. So if most of the pictures you'll see of him in the early days, uh, particularly the European Cup games, uh, that was the case. But uh, I remember him making some wonderful saves, you know, high cloud, very agile goalkeeper. He was superb. Uh, yeah. Unfortunately, well, not unfortunately for him, but for us, the Scottish people remember him for obviously the goal at Hamden when Kenny put it through his legs. But uh, he, he was a true gentleman after that game. Any goalkeeper would have just a buckled. But he was very positive after it. Yeah, I mean, listen, it's, I think that was 1976. Kenny joined in 1977. The dressing room, Tom, is an unforgiving place. <laughs> And, and Dalglish, I am almost sure, would have given Ray Clemens pelters. But, you know, you're talking about a year later, Kenny Dalglish signs for Liverpool. Um, you know, Ray Clemens has already got one European Cup winner's medal in his tail. And then Kenny scores against Bruges at Wembley. And Ray Clemens has got another European Cup winner's medal. No, brilliant. Um, listen, as Ruffy said, I was looking up last night, his record. His, his, his medal hall is unbelievable. You know, he's obviously one of the best goalkeepers that has ever come out of Britain. And so, you know, fair play to him. He's, and Ken Douglas would obviously give him a wee bit of stick when he came in the dressing room. You always do that when you play against people and they maybe sign me. You always remember a goal you scored or a chance you missed or somebody will always wind you up. So I'm sure there was a bit of banter, but as you said, Ray Clements was, was, a, was a top goalkeeper and by all accounts a gentleman. So, you know, rest in peace. 72, you know, he's... he's it's quite young in this day and age, so you know, rest in peace to today. Yeah, do you know what my abiding memory is, Alison? It's when he walked out at Anfield for the second half of the game as a Spurs goalkeeper, and he walked towards the cop, and to a man, woman, and child, they were there and they were cheering him, and that gives you a, a measure of how highly he's regarded by Liverpool fans. I, I was trying to think today, Ali, of players that would have been accorded that sort of, you know, reception if you're going back in a different strip. I think that moment that, that you've referenced is almost as famous as any of the saves he made or any of the performances because I think it just speaks volumes for, for the esteem in which he was held. And you're right, there are very, very few players that you can think of go back to, to a former club uh, uh, and go back with open arms, walk into to that kind of reception. It just uh, it, it just tells you everything that you need to know about how they how they held him. Yeah, absolutely. And did, I think uh, uh, did, did did we did we Morris not do that at Parkhead? No. <laughs> no, he 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 did he did, he did. <laughs> But for the he, didn't, he, didn't, he didn't quite get the same reception, Ruffy. I think there was a. I think I don't think he could hear anything anyway. And there was a huge police presence. I'm not sure why, but uh, no, he didn't get the same reception. But uh, I think I speak for all of us. Uh, rest in peace, Ray Clemens. For me, just a, a fantastic goalkeeper. Um, let's get your predictions, guys, for Wednesday night because uh, you know. We're now in a situation where sometimes in the past you were actually thinking, oh, I'll watch Scotland like this and see what's going to happen. Uh, you know, there's a wee bit of confidence. I was speaking to a few people today who said, you know, it, when you consider what's gone on in the last seven months, isn't it great just to have something that lifted the nation, albeit for, you know, 120 minutes and, and beyond? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm hoping it's a win. Uh, I really do hope it's a win. We're at one nothing. You know, again, we're we're struggling to get two goals uh, against these teams. I just want us to win the group. I want us to go into the the top group and start playing Germany and Belgium and the big sides again. I, I mean, I know it's it's a it's a big ask football and wise, but as a spectacle, that's what the supporters want. They, they're the teams you want to play against. You don't want to be playing against this the B teams that we're playing just now, you know, and you, you want to play Don't over that, Ruffy. <laughs> oh, you don't. Yeah. You want, you, where would you yeah. rather go to Hamden and watch Scotland versus Germany or Scotland versus Israel? Yeah, listen, well, Ruffy, um, no harm to Israel, but I think we think, we think, Tom, we are a higher nation and we should be among 
uh, the elite, albeit not on a regular basis, but we certainly think we should be playing those sort of countries. Is that a fair comment? Yeah, it is. I think I think that's where we should be, you know, and we should be up there to compete with these nations. And listen, I think it'll be a difficult game against Israel. Obviously, the Israel, as we all know, I've got a top goalkeeper um, who will be difficult to get two goals past, as Ruffy mentioned. So, I think if we can go there and get a one 0 I think it would be a fantastic result. Yeah. So you you're saying one nothing. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Ollie McBurney. No, I, I think we'll go back to the the the. The starting eleven. I think we'll, we'll the guys that come in that play against Serbia if they're fit, we'll come back in. We'll be full strength. One 0 Yeah. Okay. One nothing. Okay. Um, well, he started off backing him, and now he's dropped him, Ruffy. So <laughs> there's your consistency. <laughs> he's your he's your backup. Dykes comes back in. Uh, absolutely, yeah. but one 0 and it's not him, um, Ruffy. Yeah, I'm going to go for one nil as well. You know, I think uh, the way these teams have all been playing each other. If you look at the scores, it's all one nothing, one each, one nothing. No, nobody's really beat anybody convincingly. Yeah, so I, I, I'll go for one nothing as well. Yeah, Hugh Scott says it's one nothing. Christy again, Alison, how do you see it? Um, I'm going to stick with the the status quo here and, and go for a one nothing two purely because I think oh. what we've seen what we've seen even yesterday and in Thursday night is that this is a a team most definitely going in the the right direction. I think they'll get the win and I think too this is a far more significant game than than some people may realise just when it comes to your aspirations for qualification further down the line for for the World Cup. I think. Uh, it's much more significant. I know that there's so much euphoria about Thursday night in the qualification, but this game is still very, very important. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's the key to this. I mean, you know, people look at it and say, "Okay, we're brought back down to earth with that game against Slovakia." But nevertheless, Tam, it is hugely important. Ruffy's talked about the 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 games that we want to be playing, the high profile teams, but we also want this standing in the game, the coefficient to continually mm. go up. Yeah, I see. We want to go up the world rankings, we want to go up the coefficients. We want to be in groups, you know, that we're, we're one of the top seeds. And Alison's bang on, you know, if you're one of the, the top two seeds in a group, then you're going to get an easier draw. You know, you're going to get the, the, the three, third, fourth and fifth teams are going to be ones you can beat. Instead, we've been like the fourth or the third and we're always coming up against two very good teams. And we've done had that for the last 15, 20 years. You know, I look back to, to Italy and France, we had my group and we almost qualified. You know, so that's the kind of calibre of team. So Alice is right, you, you need to go up and into the higher echelons and the rankings to, to get an easier draw when it comes around to World Cup qualification or European qualification. Yeah, and I think the general uh, consensus from everyone who's been talking here on uh, Facebook, uh, Fiona Doherty says, uh, "Oh, one nothing to Scotland." Uh, I mean, I don't know too many, don't know too many Scotland fans who are thinking we can score two goals at the best of times. But um, you know, as long as we keep it tight at the back, Ruffy, I really don't care. Um, I've got that sneaky feeling as well. I think it might be one nothing, um, and and topping that group would just. I, I think it would absolutely. Top it off for us going into uh, the winter months and going into December, Ruffy. Yeah, I think the manager hit it in the head. Uh, you want to go into any big tournament on a, on a winning run. You know, people don't exactly see the ninety minutes of play, but they certainly do look at results. You know, and if it's one nothing, one nothing, one nothing. Uh, people are going to say to themselves, right, this team's hard to beat. They won't, they won't, won't have seen the game or how it's went. And the players will believe if they if they are on a winning run, get back on a winning run, you know, that uh, they'll start believing that it doesn't matter who they play uh, or who they come up against, they've got a chance of getting there. And, and that's what we want to be by the time next June comes. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for all the messages, um, giving us your predictions as well. Um, don't forget, uh, Scotland Israel will continue our build up to it tomorrow on the programme with uh, Hugh McDonald and Darren Jackson. And suddenly, and suddenly, Tom, Darren Jackson now can sign to the history books um, along with other former players because um, will we be talking about the 98 side anymore? Because no, suddenly no, we won't. We've got, a new, we've got a new batch of heroes. That's all their dinners out the road, eh? in it, in it. All, the, all the reunions, all, all the easy money they've been making, all the, all the dough, that's it, all their gov for yeah. that now. 
Well, calm down, calm down, Etam, because yeah. Ruffy's still been on the after dinner circuit ah, yeah, so three yeah. World Cups and the no, last there is a, there, there's a there's a big difference between the, the big competition than this wee uh, secondary uh, competition. <laughs> there's the Champions League and there's the Europa yeah. Cup. There's the World yeah. Cup and there's the European <laughs> Championships. <laughs> so, so for all you guys who've just sweated blood there, uh, you know, there's the World Cup and then there's the European Championships down here. <laughs> um, anyway, talk about snobbery in football, Ali. Who cares as long as we're there and as long as, as, long as Ali, you and I get a shift out of it, uh, we will be delighted. They don't care where the Euros are. Exactly, <laughs> absolutely, <laughs> exactly. You're um, you're just thinking, but it, I don't think you can underestimate what a lift it gives the whole game. E e even take it away from football. I just think it injects something into the the nation as a whole. I just you have something to look forward to again. You have um, people that that will be looking forward to watching a tournament, sitting down with their kids and watching. Scotland at an international tournament for the, for the first time in in more than two decades. You can't buy stuff like that. Like creating memories with, with your family is one thing, but but for players now, it's a, a real opportunity to go and perform on a very significant stage. It's, it's huge. I think the the knock on effect for everyone is there to see. Yeah, and for the benefit of uh, some of our kids, this is your chance for the first time in a long while to collect Panini stickers for your Euro 2020 album. That's all I'm saying, Ruffy, because we used to do it non-stop. I had Alan Ruff, and in your day, Ruffy, when you were in the Panini stickers, we had to, we had to lick the back of them and stick you in there. So now they've got a tell, wee bit of a decent on it. Tell the truth, you probably swapped me every time you got me <laughs> for somebody else. <laughs> Ruffy, Ruffy, I would not. I got up fridges all over the place, big Ruffy, the housewife's favourite. I, I would not have swapped you unless somebody had Zico. Then I would have swapped you, but nevertheless, I kept a hold of you, Ruffy, as we as we find ourselves here in 2020. Um, anyway, don't forget to like, share, and follow us on our Facebook page. And we're giving you our opinion on it if you want to give us your thoughts as well. Uh, tomorrow on the programme, I'll uh, obviously uh, reveal the winner of our uh, iPad and, of course, the prints and the T-shirts from the legends that we have in our Hall of Fame. Um, one lucky winner with uh, that as an early Christmas present. And I can tell you, we've got a bumper competition coming up in December. Uh, you will not want to miss it. And there's some great prizes on offer again on PLZ Soccer. But from Tam, Alison, Ruffy, and myself, Peter Martin, thanks for watching. Expect the best used car deals guaranteed. Visit Arnold.